there. How to pick the best uh, GPU for video editing on your old used uh, Mac Pro 4.1 and 5.1. Guys, uh, welcome back to my Mac Pro tutorial series. Um, if you have seen the previous parts, then maybe you have also, I mean, this is uh, episode number eight, I believe. And in the previous episodes, uh, one episode was uh, how to upgrade the GPU of your Mac Pro. And in the past, I installed the Sapphire Pulse uh, RX 560. And that worked well, except as you can see here, it's the two gigabyte version that I put into this Mac Pro last summer. And when I did that upgrade, I just had bought this Mac Pro used from eBay and I created like this whole tutorial series of which you're now watching part eight. But uh, while in the beginning, I was very happy with the performance. Uh, keep in mind, I came from a really old uh, 2008 iMac and that 2008 iMac had, uh, the, had on, did only use uh, 265 megabytes. So I thought, wow, if I get this card, it's about 10 times as much memory. And hey, if I can uh, edit 1080p video on an old iMac from 2008 with 265 megabytes of video memory, this uh, 560 with two gigabytes should be enough. But I've come to the conclusion that it's time to step it up to the Sapphire Radeon RX 580 with the max eight gigabytes of memory. And I also noticed um, that didn't seem to be the case last year, at least not when I looked, but now this Sapphire here that I have uh, it seems to come with a dual BIOS and uh, from what I've read, uh, I think this compute BIOS may be for these Bitcoin mining people. I mean, when I uh, bought a GPU for my used Mac Pro 4.1 uh, that I manu manually flashed to the firmware 5.1, so it's a 4.1 from 2009, but it gets detected right now with the CPU upgrade as a, I think early 2012 Mac Pro, which is kind of funny. In any case, when I uh, got this last summer, the system and upgraded it, um, these uh, RX 580, they were considerably more expensive. Uh, but since then they have come down in price and now I really thought it would be a good time to sell my, sell my old RX 560 and switch it out against the 580. So without further ado, um, this was the introductory part. Uh, next up, we're going to jump to part two, where we're going to do the install. And then our, uh, when we do the install, I, sh uh, I talk to you a little bit about cabling and maybe also uh, what you should consider when uh, changing out the graphics card. I mean, you see the PCI AUX power bus is there. And since the RX 580 is a more power hungry card, you definitely will need a different cable than with the low power card. And uh, maybe if you've seen that, on my previous uh, video where I upgraded the GPU, um, always make sure to always uh, check out in the description below because sometimes I don't mention things in the video and then I just put it put them in the video description. For example, I made a list which graphics card you can use. Obviously, there are even more powerful ones than the 580. Uh, for example, the Vega 56. Some people have used that as well. Or the RX 580 Nitro but uh, I'm gonna talk about how power consumption and what to consider in a minute. So guys, why don't we get rolling? Let's uh, install a card and then do uh, jump into the computer and do a little bit of a speed test. And uh, most importantly, also in the uh, test part, I'm also gonna talk a little bit about how the system, when you're doing video editing, use light, utilizes your system's resources, because that's also something I learned since buying this computer last year. So finally, let's get rolling with the install. So then let's quickly unbox the new Sapphire RX 580 Pulse. Um, I'm really happy that they have come down in price and uh, that, I've now, that I now know uh, how the system utilizes uh, the resources when doing video editing. Uh, that's really something I really, guys, I didn't know before. So I'm also just human, guys. I don't know all the answers just because I make tutorials. Um, but I'm constantly learning. Here you see, uh, I think the cards, the Pulse cards last year, they didn't have that BIOS switch. So I think Sapphire upgraded that. You have now have the BIOS switch. Uh, my suspicion is that compute is for all these Bitcoin miners. And from all I, I hear, there was like this Bitcoin mining craze going on. Everybody was buying these cards for Bitcoin mining rigs, which drove the price up. Um, now that has subsided somewhat. Um, we can afford these cards again. Um, one thing I know is that uh, the Pulse series, 
doesn't have this uh, LED lighting here. So I think that's also a viewer that watched my previous video or uh, made a comment, oh, my car doesn't have the lighting. Uh, only the Nitro series has the lighting, but with the Nitro series, you have to consider the Nitro series is longer uh, and just bigger and more heavy, heavier. So I'm not so sure whether it makes sense to have like the Nitro card. Um, I just went with the Pulse series, uh, that should work fine. So why don't we just take out the old RX 560 and then put this card in. Um, this back, back plate also works uh, to dissipate heat. Um, if you look, I mean, I probably, probably you can see it, see it here, but from what I've researched, it has, I think, was it a four phase power? Um, there, I mean, there are some videos online where, where people take these cards apart and then you see the components here, uh, the memory, and then maybe I can make a diagram and talk about this a little bit later in the video. But the point that I want to make is I wouldn't necessarily put this card because I have seen a lot of people put this card in the PCI slot one. Uh, I'm going to put it into the PCI slot two, simply because this will develop heat. And if, if you put it in a slot one, that cannot dissipate that well. But you're going to see that in a second. So let's just uh, switch out the cards. So guys, this bracket here at the side, uh, I already removed that. Um, that should be pretty straightforward. Um, what you always have to be careful is um, down here, you have the PCI AUX A and PCI AUX B. Uh, I hope you can see that. Uh, if not, if it's a little bit too dark, I can overlay another picture. So you have the PCI AUX A and B. And basically when you pull out that uh, cable or if you plug it in, uh, but especially if you pull it out, um, you gotta be really careful um because you don't want to hit any of these elements down here at the board and obviously you have to uh, push that tab and then pull and i found with the back portion you can easily uh, bump into some of these uh, soldered on components on the board and you don't want to damage anything there so they just be gentle uh, and we're just going to take out this card and i pulled this out already very carefully so let's pull out the uh, old rx 560 and do you see uh, even this 560, I uh, eventually I put the, um, I put it into the slot two, and I felt if you put your GPU in the slot two, it will definitely stay cooler because the air flows below here. <clears throat> and while with the uh, old card, the 560, it doesn't. Uh, you the 560 you can also put in the bottom, but this 580, I wouldn't put this in the bottom slot. Simple because if you have it in the bottom slot and it just touches the surface, I mean, how's the heat uh, gonna, how's the heat gonna dissipate? Um, just put it into slot two and your card should stay much, much cooler. Um, let's, uh, if you don't believe me, uh, just try it like that and then uh, play a game in, or put the card on the heavy load and then uh, touch it very carefully and you will see it gets in incredibly, it gets incredibly hot. Um, this card draws way, way, way more power uh, than the old 560. The old 560 draws very, very little power and the 580 is considerably more power hungry. Uh, and guys, to be precise, I think I even did it wrong. Um, you probably should uh, connect the PCI AUX A and B first uh, so that this cable is prepared and then you can uh, plug this in because right now I don't have much room to maneuver here with my hand. So maybe uh, take the cable first and if you if you would have the nitro it would be even longer and that's also a thing like the nitro card if it's so long i feel it's a little bit counterproductive because these fans are going to spin uh, yes some heat is going to dissipate out here but there's also a fair amount that it's going going to blow in that direction so these fans kind of meet so i feel if there's a little bit more space then uh, it can uh, eventually escape the system easier than what it will then if as if it is uh, with the Nitro Plus cards right in front. Obviously, if you have the money, get the uh, Vega 56, uh, I think MSI Air Boost, I think it's called, because that just takes all the air in and then pushes it out. Um, so the, the Vega 56 Air Boost, um, that's a card that's really nice, but obviously that costs uh, twice as much as the 580. So I didn't go with the Vega cards yet, but uh, hey, maybe the Vega cards come down in price as well and then I can make a switch again. So let's just connect the cables. 
So guys, I connected the power cable and then to uh, put this bracket, um, just slide it in from the side. Um, that was also a little bit easier with the 560, but this is a little bit higher, so uh, you gotta be a little bit, uh, it's a little bit delicate to put this in there. And guys, I always use this as screwdriver um, uh, because it's just more convenient than doing this by hand. So this uh, concludes the installation part of the RX 580, the Pulse Edition. Um, right now, we're gonna jump into the computer and look at some of the energy consumption and the performance test. I'm gonna run the Geekbench test again and share, share with you a little bit my experience also with gaming and especially with the video editing because that's what I'm gonna mainly use this for. So let's jump into the computer. And yeah guys, before we do that, uh, one thing I forgot to, to mention is in normal use, if you're just on a desktop, uh, maybe I can quickly turn this on. Um, when you boot it up, the fans are running, but it shouldn't take long. Maybe just uh, just wait a second until it boots up. Uh, it really seems to be really good at managing the energy consumption because as soon as the system is booted up, these fans will stop running. So the system has booted up and we're gonna jump into the computer in a second. But as you can see, um, under normal desktop use, if I'm just on the desktop, maybe browsing the web or something, um, this card doesn't get hot at all. Uh, the fans don't spin because um, like I mentioned earlier, there's like this big uh, passive cooling or uh, this big cooling element below. So which little heat uh, just dissipates to the top and probably through this fan is just carried right out. So that's really good. Uh, if you don't put a heavy load on it, uh, it will be all virtually totally quiet, uh, which I really like, big thumbs up. So guys, we now jump to part three. Uh, you can see this in the navigation, uh, the performance review and the Sapphire Radeon RX 580 is installed in the system and is running fine. And like I mentioned in the introductory part, before you install the new graphics card, uh, make sure you're at least running High Sierra. So now uh, you see it gets detected just fine. And the main thing that was the surprise with me uh, when I bought the Mac Pro used last year, you see it's an early 2009 with the flashed firmware from the Mac Pro 4,1 to the Mac Pro 5,1. Uh, I upgraded the CPU and I also put in 24 gigabytes of server memory thinking, wow, if I do video editing in iMovie, uh, the system will utilize this video memory. But unfortunately, that is not necessarily the, uh, the case. So basically I have this software like right here that you can also download this. I think it's called iStat Menus or something. Um, you can get it from the App Store or just from their website. And basically the software protocols uh, the system use. And what I noticed using the old uh, GPU, the RX 560, is that the memory of when I did video editing, the iMovie, so let's say I open the video project uh, like I did just right now. Um, so I start working with that video project. I'm scrubbing the footage. I import in the footage. Uh, I do edits. I put uh, put some music in here. Maybe I put a picture overlay when I explain something to re-emphasize the point. Um, and maybe like you know from my videos, I have the introductory part and have maybe I have an unboxing part. And maybe I have a sound test part. And um, maybe in the beginning my videos were shorter and they weren't as sophisticated and not as complicated um, but the projects grew in size and as the project grew in size um, the, uh, the footage also got, got, got longer and sometimes I had uh, let's say videos uh, that were especially long where I did like these uh, radio reviews um, these PMR radios these different radios uh, for communication and then let's say what you see here is like I, I go out and do a range test so uh, basically what that means, I just uh, put the camera on record. Uh, maybe maybe it seems to, to you that I digress a little bit, but I'm going to get to the point in a second. So if I create like a 30 minute video where just a few seconds are where I do the range test from this radio, I still import that footage. And that still seems to be that iMovie just takes all that footage. And over time, as I work with the projects, this gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And now I have eight gigabytes. So when you see 25%, that would be two gigabyte. It would fill up really, really quickly. And I know when I import the video files that the projects are much larger, 
But when I put together the, the Mac Pro, or the used Mac Pro, I was under the impression, well, that's what you have the system, uh, system memory for. But uh, I'm really disappointed because usually this uh, system memory, I have like eight gigabyte sticks with a total of 24. Usually the system uh, memory is rarely used above 35%. Uh, I mean, it really caps out at 30% which means I only use eight gigabyte. I think eight gigabyte seems to be the magic mark. And as soon as your system uses more than eight gigabyte of memory, I don't know what uh, the Mac OS does, but uh, iMovie uses very little system memory. And uh, I can go back here, you see seven days, um, very little system memory use, even if I do video editing. And that to me is like really disappointing because I put 24 gigabyte of system memory in. But what I noticed is when it comes to graphics card memory, uh, it's a whole nother story. Do you see here? Um, here I did edit like uh, finalized one of the big projects that I worked on that was like longer. Maybe it had a lot of files. And even with the RX 580, it starts using all the eight gigabytes. So the bottom line is if you plan to do a lot of video editing on your Mac, and at least in the case with iMovie, is that iMovie seems to prefer the graphics card memory and it uh, totally ignores the system memory. I don't know what the logic is behind that. Maybe a lot of people use like uh, these MacBooks or they use the iMacs, uh, maybe older ones and Apple has determined uh, most systems have about eight gigabyte of memory. So we don't wanna tax the system memory so much. So let's just use the GPU memory and constantly read and write from your disk because that's basically what happened. I had just two gigabytes of memory. The project was easily bigger than two gigabytes. So it would constantly read the video footage into the GPU memory. And then when I scrub to the footage, it would dump it out of this uh, GPU memory portion and read another stuff in. So I'm um, not sure what the logic behind that is. Uh, but one thing I know from testing the new graphics card, uh, the eight gigabyte of memory really helped me when it comes to video editing. So this is the main uh, point uh, that oh, I really want to hammer home with you. If you'd want to do video editing, the video memory matters, at least in iMovie. Um, some people may use other software, like if you use Adobe Premiere or something like this. I don't have Adobe Premiere, so I'm not exactly sure on how Adobe Premiere would use the memory. Uh, some programs, they might utilize the system memory, in which case you are lucky. Uh, in my case with iMovie, I still have iMovie, that's not the case. And I'm planning to switch to Final Cut Pro X soon. And for that, I can also then test this here and see whether it behaves differently. But for video editing, the GPU memory is a really, really sweet, uh, nice thing to have. So second test, obviously is Geekbench. So I did uh, purchase the version of Geekbench to run uh, the full tests, both with OpenCL and Metal. Um, and yeah, Metal is the new API and uh, the RX 580, uh, as far as I can see from my testing, the compute uh, score is twice as high. So that, that's something I kind of knew beforehand um, that compute wise, it's twice uh, as fast. But for me, the real difference is not just the compute. For me, the real difference is the video memory because I need the video memory in the GPU uh, for video editing. And that, that's guys, uh, I'm just human, you know, I, I didn't know that for, before. I, like I told you in the, in, the, in, in the introductory part, I used to have uh, just the old 2008 iMac uh, with uh, four gigabyte of system memory and 256 megabyte. Uh, of uh, GPU memory and that worked for video editing. So when I made the switch to the used Mac Pro, even with the smaller GPU of the 560, um, that, that was like a huge performance gain and I was just blown away. So, but you get used to it after a while. That's kind of the point that I want to make. You use it for a while and then you notice some other things that you didn't notice before. So that's why I'm sharing this with you. So uh, performance wise, uh, I couldn't be happier. Uh, twice the performance runs really nice and smooth. I'm not sure whether this helps you a lot to have these details, but to finally get to my third point, obviously you can use that for gaming uh, as well. It's not as if I'm a heavy gamer, but I have like a small collection in this uh, Steam app. So the games that I tested uh, in the past was like XCOM 2 works very, very well. Um, although you gotta admit like um, 
well, I gotta say, uh, I compared it under Windows 10 and under Mac, and it, it's just like, it really seems to me that, yeah, you can play these games on a Mac, they will run, uh, they will run nice, but you always will get, uh, I feel, a little bit more performance out of, um, just maybe just switch out the drive uh, with the Windows 10, and you will get better performance under these other systems. But I tested it with XCOM, as well as Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, and with Hitman Absolution, and at least for the, these three games, uh, they work well on the 560, and they work even better on the 580. So uh, gaming-wise, the 580 works very well as well. So the, this brings us to the last part. Obviously, the power consumption when you play a game is uh, the highest. Um, I also kind of measured this uh, with this iStart menus app. And if you scroll down here, I'm not sure whether you can see this because my picture is in the bottom, but uh, um, you can, for example. Uh, so guys, I just had to uh, change the position of my uh, my myself here so that you can see that. Uh, if you scroll down, you can see the power usage of the PCI AUX A and B as well as the PCI slot. So, and then you just calculate the wattage uh, and back here, you see, I quickly just for a few minutes uh, started a game and monitored the power use. So when you play a game, it draws the most power because the CPU is under the highest loads. Uh, and these other peaks that you see here is probably when I do video editing or when I export a video. Because when I export a video, uh, it, uh, it seems that the exporting of the video file is uh, to a big part done by the CPU. But a portion also seems to be allocated to the GPU which is kind of nice to see. And what I calculated in power use is the power draw from all I could see uh, rarely exceeded 130 watts. watts. Um, so that's, uh, in, in a sense, it's like a kind of positive uh, result because if you look on the Sapphire webpage, you see that they kind of list 225. Uh, in practicality, if the iStat menus uh, shows it correctly. I mean, I tested it on the Windows as well. It rarely goes above that. And on the desktop use, it's even lower. So right now we're just using the desktop. So on the desktop use, I think it's like 30 watts. Uh, if you're just using it on a desktop, maybe if you do video editing, it's maybe 60 watts. Uh, this is like a guess right now, but uh, the highest, uh, and that was what I was interested for, was about 130. So that will kind of explain uh, why some people were able to put in the nitro the nitro card that is listed with 235 uh, maybe the nitro card draws 150 or 160 so i'm almost guessing that the manufacturers just list a higher power draw to have a margin of safety um, guys uh, that's my personal opinion so no guarantees um, always make sure you are on the safe side i usually pick the cards that draw a little bit less power uh, just to be safe with the RX 560, the smaller one. I think when I played the game and put it on the load, it was around 60 watts or 65 maybe. So, and again, the 560 was also listed with 75 watts power draw. So, uh, not sure why this is uh, so low, but uh, for me, it's a good thing. And in a sense, uh, at 130 watts power draw, what I measured, uh, it, still, it still gets pretty hot, especially this uh, back plate. It gets pretty hot so don't put it into the pci slot one overall the card gets a really big thumbs up from me so let's jump to the summary and conclusion and wrap up this review so guys this concludes my review of how to upgrade the graphics card in your mac pro 4.1 and 5.1 to a radeon rx 580 that's perfect for video editing and in my opinion really has boosted the performance Yes, you can also edit video with the RX 560, but from my experience, the biggest differentiator that, that I think uh, I noticed was the video memory because I found over time that my projects grew in size and for that the two gigabyte turned out not to be enough. So I'm happy uh, that I get much smoother video editing out of this with the eight gigabyte. Granted, I didn't find like a huge increase in uh, rendering times, meaning when you export a video, Currently with the 580, if I export a 10 minute video, for example, it also will take about 10 minutes to render. That, that is 1080p footage. So 1080p footage, 10 minutes, takes about 10 minutes to render. The biggest uh, improvement in, uh, in performance 
I got really from the smoothness of editing. And uh, maybe if you're into YouTube and content creation, then you know you can spend quite a lot of time on editing, especially if your projects get bigger and especially if you start adding the occasional B-roll everywhere, then uh, the exporting time, uh, if 10 minutes of footage takes 10 minutes, uh, for me, that's really not such a big deal. Uh, I'm much, much more concerned with the performance while I'm editing. And that's uh, what the eight gigabytes did. Because when I if I would, uh, spent a couple hours uh, working on a product review or tutorial such as this, then obviously I can't walk away from the editing phase. I really have to be physically there and it has to be super buttery smooth. Even if the projects get bigger and bigger and more complicated, while when I just uh, hit export, um, the computer does its thing, it exports it. I can just walk away, grab a cup, cup of tea or a cup of coffee. So whether it takes 10 minutes or 50 minutes, uh, that's not such a big deal to me. And then a second thing that I'm gonna do next up in the next uh, tutorial series, I'm gonna look at NVMe memory because obviously in the past uh, what I did, I just used the normal solid state disk drives and these solid state disk drives basically uh, use a protocol that's called AHCI, I believe. I hope I pronounced this right. But basically, before I digress any further, uh, these old SSDs, they are just slower. And from what I've read on the Mac Rumors forum uh, a couple of months ago, uh, is that Apple supposedly in included the NVMe boot support, which people were finally really happy to see because that's something people are, have been waiting for a long, long time because these NVMe drives are much, much faster. And speed matters if you want to do uh, eventually 4K video editing. So I hope I'm going to have, and I'm going to end up after all these upgrades with a perfect 10 year old computer that's still uh, in 2019 fully capable of editing 4K video. So that's going to be interesting. So stay tuned for the next episode with the NVMe. Um, big thumbs up for uh, lots of video memory in your video editing rig. So I think that's pretty cool. And shout out to all my viewers and the people on the Mac Rumors forum. Really cool, uh, great advice. Make sure to also check the description from time to time. Um, if I sometimes I miss something, I, I'm making updates there. Uh, but without further ado, this concludes this video. Uh, have fun with your new Mac Pro graphics card. Uh, I see you in the next part, uh, in the next video. Uh, all the best to you, take care. And because you just watched uh, the Mac Pro tutorial video number eight, with the Radeon graphics card. Um, I'm also going to show you in the next follow-up tutorial how to install an NVMe drive because uh, those are considerably faster than uh, the old uh, SATA 2 SSDs. Uh, guys, uh, I'm amazed at how many people have already subscribed to my channel. You can subscribe right now as well. I see you in the next video. All the best to you. Take care.